All right, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Davey Rao, Livestock and Natural Resources Advisor in San Benito, Monterey, and Santa Cruz counties. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about integrated pest management for yellow star thistle control. And I wanna point out that just about everything that I'm gonna talk about tonight um, comes from this book called Weed Control in Natural Areas in the Western United States. This book is a publication that is put out by UC Cooperative Extension, um, put together by Jody, Jody Tommaso, Guy Kaiser, and a bunch of other folks. And there's a chapter in here on yellow star thistle, which is my focus of my talk tonight. Every weed in this book, you can actually get the chapter or the section online if you just go to Google and type in the species. So type in yellow star thistle and then UC weed report, you'll get the chapter um, for free online. So that's always an option as well. So before I go into talking about different control methods for yellow star thistle, I wanna briefly uh, mention a yellow star thistle lookalike and that is tokoloti thistle thistle. And so oops, on, the, uh -oh. on the left side of my screen here, this is tocolote. And on the right side of my screen, these three flowers are yellow star thistle. So I just want to make sure everybody knows what yellow star thistle looks like. Um, so this one is early flowering yellow star thistle. This is sort of mid stage flowering yellow star thistle. And this is fully um, fully flowered. And so these are all yellow star thistle. And the thing that really you want to pay attention to is, of course, the yellow flowers, but also these strong, straight, stiff yellow spines that come out from the head under the flower. Um, Tocolote similarly has the yellow flowers and it has this bulbous um, portion under the flower head, but the spines coming off of the tocolote thistle are not straight, they're curved slightly downward, and they're not yellow, they're sort of, I don't know what color to call that, maybe a brownish reddish color to white, um, and they're not as stiff and hard as the spines under the yellow star thistle. So, so tonight we are going to be talking about yellow star thistle, so these guys. So there are multiple different options for controlling yellow star thistle. And tonight I'm gonna to talk about herbicide, grazing, mowing, and burning. So first I will talk about, um, whoops, I was trying to get rid of the um, top part of my screen because I can't see some of my um, slide, but that's okay. On, onward. So I want to say that what the information I'm giving you tonight is I'm not making any recommendations. I'm not a herbicide expert. I would recommend if you're looking for recommendations to um, consult a pest control advisor or a PCA. So, so that said, I will talk a little bit about some herbicides for controlling yellow star thistle. And before I talk about the herbicides, I want to talk about the different life stages or growth stages of yellow star thistle, because depending on what growth stage your yellow star thistle in, that will dictate what herbicide might be most appropriate, most effective. So this is the seedling stage of yellow star thistle. That's when it's first coming out of the ground, and it just has the two little cotyledons, the first two leaves that come out of the ground. So that's what the seedling stage looks like for yellow star thistle. Then from there, it be, goes into the rosette stage. And so this is the rosette stage here. And the basically you get several leaves coming out of the ground, but the leaves are laying flat against the ground surface. And then from there, it goes to the bolting stage, which is what you see on the picture on the right. So that's when a stem comes out of the center of the rosette and it, the stem kind of bolts out. <laughs> And that's considered the bolting stage. So for uh, aminopyrrolid or milestone, uh, the book says is one of the most effective herbicides to control yellow star thistle. And the time to spray with milestone is from the seedling stage to the mid rosette stage. So if you see some your yellow star thistle in this stage to this stage, uh, milestone uh, is a good option. Clopyrrolid or transline also gives excellent control of yellow star thistle. And the best timing to spray if you're using transline is to spray in the rosette stage, the later rosette stage and before bolting. So you, you don't wanna wait till it gets to the bolting stage if you're gonna use transline. This, uh, this tell, shows you the two 
herbicides I already talked about, the milestone and the trans line. It shows you the product name, the chemical name, the rate per acre, so how much you're going to spray and when to spray. So we already talked about the first two. And I just also wanted to mention that Roundup is a third option or uh, glyphosate. Um, if you've missed those early stages, if, if you miss, miss the seedling stage, if you miss that rosette stage, um, Roundup can actually be effective to control yellow star thistle from the bolting stage to the beginning of the flowering stage. So that's another option too. So three different options depending on the life stage. And there are other herbicides that are effective as well, but I just, I'm highlighting these three right now. Grazing is another option that you can use to control yellow star thistle. And I should say that all of these different um, control strategies can be used alone, but are almost always more effective when used with at least one other uh, control strategy as well. So we talked about herbicides. Grazing is also an option. Grazing can be, you can graze with cattle, sheep, or goats for yellow star thistle. Um, the timing that you want to graze is when the yellow star thistle has bolted. So you don't want it when it's in the rosette stage, which is flat to the ground. It's harder for the livestock to get to it. You want to wait until it's actually bolted. So it has a stem sticking out of the ground, but you want to wait, uh, or you don't want to wait so long as to the point where it has this spine sticking out of the flower bud because cattle and sheep will tend to avoid yellow star thistle once it gets these spines. However, um, goats will continue to eat it at that spiny stage. So if you're in a situation where you have access to goats, if you have a small property and you can hire some goats to come in and you've waited too long and your yellow star thistle is already in this stage, um, goats could still potentially be effective. Good source of nutrition for livestock, but also uh, uh, just to follow up on what Brooke had said, um, yellow star thistle is poisonous to horses, so you don't want to use horses as a control method for um, uh, for yellow star thistle. I wanted to mention mowing. Mowing is also a tool that you can use to control yellow star thistle, and I want to point out here um, that the timing of mowing is extremely important. You want to wait until uh, that two to five percent of the this is actually yellow star thistle flower but this is the bud before it actually goes into the flowering stage so these are the these three pictures over here to the right these are the flowers you can see the flowers coming out of that bulbous bud so you you don't want to mow when everything looks like this you want to wait until uh, about three to five percent of your population actually has some flowers. And it's really critical to mow at the right time because if you mow too early, you can actually, you know, you'd be mowing a bunch of the grasses that are actually competing with the yellow star thistle. So if you um, mow those grasses, then you reduce the competition with other species and you give more resources to the yellow star thistle to regrow and they can end up with more seed production. And if you mow too late, you can actually scatter those seeds and spread those seeds. And some research has shown that it's effective to mow twice each year for multiple years. You mow when you first see that two to 5% of the flower heads in bloom, and then you wait about four to six weeks and mow again once it's sort of re-sprouted. Re I also wanted to mention prescribed burning as a potential control method for yellow star thistle. And the timing for burning is um, just when it's starting to flower. Two to three burns in a row is best, but that's often extremely difficult to get the correct conditions to burn more than one year in a row. So oftentimes using prescribed burning is best uh, when you can use, when used as an integrated approach. So in particular, you burn in year one, and then you follow up that with uh, herbicide the following year. Um, so this is, we actually did a prescribed burn in Bitterwater in Southern San Benito County, uh, few years back. And you can see the prescribed burn here. And here, let's see, whoops. There's, in addition to yellow star thistle, there's a bunch of mustard in that field. And so, oops, you can see that it, actually it rained, I think about two and a half weeks before the burn. And 
timing wise, it was a good time for the burn. The yellow star thistle had headed out. It was starting to flower. However, because the moisture conditions weren't appropriate because there were so, and also because the plants, we had so much of this green uh, mustard in the field, it was really difficult to get that uh, kill on the yellow star thistle. So here's what, a picture of what that field looked like after the prescribed burn. You can see um, some of the field burned nicely, but there's still a lot of green yellow star thistle and mustard in that field. So it wasn't the most effective burn to control yellow star thistle. But we were using this as a training burn, so we had other objectives as well. We're trying to train the community on how to do prescribed burning. So we followed up that burn with an herbicide treatment. We used capstone and we consulted with a, 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 a PCA. Um, and so they recommended capstone, which is a combination of garlon and milestone. And we sprayed three quarts per acre with 1% MSO. And the reason we used capstone is because you can see here, you saw in the other picture, there's that in addition to yellow star, there, there's the um, summer mustard. So capstone is effective because it's a combination of both milestone and garlon. The milestone is effective on the yellow star thistle and the garlon is effective on the summer mustard. So this is what the field looked like after the burn and then after the herbicide treatment. You can see um, that there's not uh, much, if any, I can't see in this picture of the yellow star thistle or the summer mustard. And so this is just another um, example. I'm showing these two arrows so we can compare this picture with the next picture. So here's you know these two trees. So if you look from here to here, you can see all of this yellow stuff. So the summer mustard and yellow star thistle and various other weeds. And then after the burn and herbicide treatment, this is roughly the same area taken from a different vantage point. And again, you can see that it's mostly just grass. Um, so that was all I wanted to share on that. Using uh, multiple treatment options for yellow star thistle can be effective. It's really important to do more than one year of treatment to control yellow star thistle. The seeds last in the seed bank for about three to five years. So if you can do um, three to five years at least of control treatment, you're gonna get the best control of your yellow star thistle. And with that, I will wrap it up.